Hi there guys, I hope you are having a good day. Grab yourself a cup of tea and let's talk some boxing. So, Wilder vs Fury 3 will take place on July 24th at the T-Mobile Arena. And there was a press conference, which I'm sure you have seen, where Wilder remained silent for pretty much most of it and had his headphones in. Tyson Fury was being his usual Tyson Fury self, trying to get under the skin of his trainer, because if he can't get to Deontay Wilder, then he's got to try and get to his trainer, which is what he attempted to do. And Malik Scott was coming back and forth with him, so that was kind of interesting and mildly entertaining at times. Now, Tyson Fury also explained he's going to try and balloon up or bulk up to £300 for this contest and be bigger, stronger, faster, more powerful and go for one big shot to take Deontay Wilder out. He believes he can do it quicker than seven rounds. And that is because he was working on that style, the Kronk style, for a few months before the second Deontay Wilder fight. This time, he's had probably around 18 months to try and get that sorted and be fully prepared to employ that style against Wilder a third time. Now, of course, there was some talk about Anthony Joshua and the fact that that fight wasn't happening. Wilder actually thanked his legal team for getting him this fight because... It looked shaky at one point, but considering the contract could have been squashed in December, they were going to be in a good position, and I believe that those behind the scenes at Team Fury probably should have known that. But moving on from that, the fight that is happening is Wilder Fury 3, and it was an interesting kind of press conference, I guess. I mean, in some ways it was kind of like Tyson Fury playing squash with himself. He was just kind of batting up against a wall because Deontay Wilder did not want to engage with him in any way, shape or form. I believe that he didn't even really want to do the face-off because he didn't want to be the first one to walk away either, and eventually he was. For all of 5 minutes and 40 seconds, they stood there looking at one another, and Tyson Fury said he was not going to be the one to walk away. And obviously, his brother and his team member Isaac Lowe were stood behind him. There was a little bit of back and forth between the two teams, not a lot, but there was some. And Tyson Fury was the one left standing up there on the stage and Deontay Wilder just walked away. He didn't want anything more to do with Tyson Fury, didn't want to answer any questions, didn't want to turn to face the front and take a picture next to Tyson Fury. Just stared him out, then walked away. So, it is interesting the approach from Deontay Wilder. Tyson Fury is the same as he always has been, and I don't think we'll ever see a different Tyson Fury in press conferences and in build-ups to fights. But Deontay Wilder was an interesting one. The silence, making a 40-second opening statement, I mean, it wasn't even that. He literally just muttered a few words, thanked his legal team, said what is going to happen, and he said that, it's going to be brutal, in other words, and literally just sat down, headphones in, looking down at the desk, not already engaging with anyone. So I believe what Deontay Wilder is trying to do is ensure that Tyson Fury cannot get into his head. So he doesn't want to hear anything that Tyson Fury has to say. He doesn't even really want to look at him. I mean, obviously they had the face off, but again, I don't really think he wants to be around Tyson Fury or even anywhere near him. So that is interesting from Deontay Wilder. And of course, it's because he doesn't want Tyson Fury getting into his head. Because of all of the allegations he's made towards Tyson Fury after the manner in which he lost the second fight, there are going to be so many things that Tyson Fury can use against him to try and get into his head. So Wilder is cutting that off at the source. He's not allowing Tyson Fury any kind of opportunity to do that. And I'm not sure whether that's a good thing to do. I think that if Tyson Fury is going to get into his head, he's going to get into his head. Tyson Fury will find a way to do it. He's probably already done it. There's no way that he can stop that. And there was only one press conference that will be the only one. So that means he does not have to hang out with Tyson Fury again until fight night, which is probably good for Deontay Wilder. But there are going to be times when he sees what Tyson Fury has said. And that's just the way it is. There's going to be fight week as well, where they probably do a press conference, maybe just before the fight, maybe even after the weigh-in, there's going to be more to come from Tyson Fury, more opportunities for him to get into the head of Deontay Wilder. Now, in some ways, I think that it could have been a good decision to make from Wilder. In some ways, I think it's a bad decision. 
Now, the reason why I think is a bad decision is because he is getting ready for a third fight with Tyson Fury, and they have an obligation also to try and drive pay-per-view numbers to make people interested in the contest, to want to buy it, and to want to see it. That is part and parcel to Deontay Wilder's responsibility to hype up the fight. That is the whole point of having a press conference, not just to sit there in silence. So on that side of it, probably not the best idea from Deontay Wilder because he's not fulfilling his media obligations. Otherwise, what is the point in him even being there? Now, of course, on the other hand, for reasons we have already explained, the fact that he does not allow Tyson Fury to get into his head, he's not up there for 15 minutes or half an hour going back and forth with Tyson Fury, getting mad, getting wound up, and beginning his training camp angry, beginning his training camp wanting to hurt Tyson Fury, to exact revenge on what happened to him last time, but not only that, for the things he said about what happened last time. So, those things can be avoided by him shutting himself off from Tyson Fury completely. The problem also psychologically, if that is what he is trying to do, trying to make sure that he's training for a better boxing plan, for a game plan to beat Tyson Fury, not angrily, not to exact revenge, but for a boxing match to deal with business in the ring. The problem with that is he's not facing up to Tyson Fury, so he's not dealing with his demons. He could start doing that by talking to Tyson Fury at the press conference, he could do that by saying something and not remaining silent. It was clearly a psychological thing and a choice based on that. That was the reason why Deontay Wilder did not say anything other than a short opening statement, then headphones in, eyes down, not talking, not interacting with anyone, not even really his trainer or his team, just literally the face off, then after five minutes, just walking away. Now, I don't put too much stock in who stood there still at the end. I mean, it's a little bit, it's a psychological victory for Tyson Fury. And you can tell at that point, no one's walking away apart from Deontay Wilder. Tyson Fury will stand up there all night if he had to, because he does believe in those little psychological victories. I'm just wondering if Deontay Wilder has made the right choice by not facing up to his demons now. On the one hand, he won't be training angry, trying to exact revenge. He won't be putting himself in a situation where he's going back and forth with Tyson Fury in that press conference. The only problem is he now has to deal with the demons all on fight night instead of breaking the ice and getting the nerves out of the way in the press conference. I mean, at this stage, does he believe he's going to be suffering from nerves? Well, he will do on fight night when he starts walking to the ring and remembers what happened in the second contest. So it was an interesting choice from Deontay Wilder, and we can say it's the right one, we can say it's the wrong one to behave like that. In many ways it was the wrong way, if anything, just down to the media side, as I said, it's his obligation to try and promote the fight, that's the whole point of having a press conference. Now on the other hand, maybe it doesn't allow Tyson Fury to get into his head. There are so many ways you can look at it, and the fight is only just over a month away. So Wilder will be in the midst of his training camp, he won't want to disrupt his rhythm and the things he's been working on during that training camp. As I said, there's so many ways you can look at it, you can say that Wilder was wrong, you can say that he was right to do it, but at the end of the day, that is only the psychological side. What about when he gets in the ring again with Tyson Fury, and Fury is moving, he has powerful shots, he puts together his punches as well, backs him up behind the jab, does not allow him to set his feet, is constantly pressuring him. Those are the obstacles he will also have to overcome, aside from the mental side, when he gets back in with Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury is a very skillful boxer, but he also has the ability to get into his opponent's head. Wilder needs to realise it's not all about the mental side, it's also about having the skills in the boxing ring to be able to execute his game plan in order to get anything out of the fight with Tyson Fury. Judging by what happened last time, you would have to believe it's going to be a repeat. And Tyson Fury will look to break him down, back him up, not allow him to set his feet and land that right hand because Wilder needs to do that. Wilder needs to set his feet to get the balance under him to be able to throw that right hand. If he cannot do that because Tyson Fury is in his face pushing him back, you have to wonder what else can Deontay Wilder do in there with Fury. Anyway, guys, what are your thoughts on this? Make sure you leave your thoughts in the comments below. Also, leave a like and grab that subscribe button. Thanks guys.